David Freeman Green is from Orion. Thanks very much, Rob. Thank you, uh, Mike, for a very spirited uh, presentation. That was very enjoyable. I'll try and match the energy as, as best that the, as I can. Now, today, I'm, I'm just going to bring it down to a little bit more of a, a local level and what um, Orion's been up to in the last few years and also um, what we plan to do in the future and try and weave in the collaboration and innovation theme that we've got running in this afternoon's session. But first, a little bit about Orion and who we are. Um, where, uh, simply put, your local lines company, most of you may know that, we, have, we, we sit in this part of the electricity supply chain, so we deliver um, electricity to homes and businesses. Simple lines and cables, and that's what we do. We don't aspire um, to be sexy, uh, as Roger was talking about. We, we just want to get the job done fundamentally for Christchurch and the broader Canterbury region. So that's where we operate. We have network in that area. Um, and, and we have about 8,000 square kilometres and about 190,000 customers that we serve. Our focus, a simple focus, is to provide a safe and reliable supply of electricity and I'd add to that a, a resilient one as well. Um, that's key for those high impact events that we're so familiar with, we need to be resilient. So how do we, how do, we do that? Well, fundamentally, we, Orion and its subsidiary, subsidiary uh, contracting company, Kinetics, uh, Restore, and there's pictures of Restore there. We maintain, we operate, and we augment our network to serve Christchurch needs and the broader Canterbury regions. So, Restore is the high-octane stuff that we do. So, for instance, in the earthquake scenarios, we completed um, the emergency works by September 2011, about that time. Um, after that, we have to systematically go through the network and make sure we pick up um, the faults and repair them where we need to. The other part, at the other end of the spectrum, is the planning we need to do. And this diagram, let me just take, it, take you through it. The, the, the black dots uh, represent our existing network. The red lines are what we're planning to do in the next five years, and the blue lines are what we're planning to do after that. So a few interesting things about what we're planning to do in the future, um, and this is driven out of natural growth and also the earthquake shift that we've seen in population. So over in the east by Dellington on the far left side, um, I think it is for you guys, um, you can see the V up to Dellington, and that's where we're putting in um, cables to to replace the temporary lines we put up to serve the east and get power to the east that we had to do in in pretty quick time post the quakes. Up in the north, you see a lot of activity, and that's also to, to meet the capacity or the demand that you're seeing up in that area, or that we're seeing up in that area from the population that's moving in terms of the growth in those subdivisions up there. And from a network engineer's perspective, they'll tell you this ring is a beautiful thing um, because it adds diversity of route and allows us to, where we have one issue in one area, we can take supply around the other. And this, just I should have said this at the beginning, this is our big um, cable network. So this is the highway that, that moves the, the electricity around the network that, that, that feeds into the lines and cables that service your homes and businesses. So that's that central sort of urban Christchurch. And not to forget, forget um, our rural cousins. So huge growth that was discussed or talked about this morning in the context of um, the rural area. And again, the same pattern for this diagram, dots existing, uh, red next five years, and blue subsequent five years. So we're seeing huge growth in, in, in places like Rolleston that we had the stats for this morning. And, and for us, we have to make sure our network has the capacity to meet that need. And as well as uh, residential growth that was talked about, there's significant business growth. We've got Fonterra and Sindley uh, building uh, major milk plants milk drying plants, um, and they will take about the equivalent of uh, seven to 10,000 households worth of power. And so they need to have a network that is resilient and reliable so they can get their produce out to the market. The, the numbers, I won't dwell on these, but there's a lot of money being spent 
um, in the next five years, and we spend that carefully. We want to be efficient and get biggest bang for buck in our market. We know uh, electricity prices are the subject of, um, of uh, much discussion, so we, we aim to be as efficient as efficient as we can. But we think we need to support the Christchurch uh, and Canterbury uh, region to enable the growth that we're going to see in the future, and this is what we need to do. So 15,000 odd uh, new connections for homes and businesses that we, we serve, um, that we're going to have to, have to do. Um, the major thing around this, um, sort of the conclusion that takes us into, into the innovative part, is that this is not business as usual for Orion. This is, I don't think our business has actually uh, moved into a business as usual mode in the last three years, and certainly not in the two years since I've been at Orion. We have to figure out, as I keep saying, how we serve the community. Um, teamwork and collaboration is key. Uh, that collaboration came to the fore um, strongly post the quakes, which is fairly well documented and understood. Um, but we have, we have a workforce of about 200 odd people on the ground, give or take contractors that we have, and those were deployed um, in the period post the earthquakes. That was augmented by about four or 500 people from around New Zealand and Australia to help uh, restore the network. So that, that teamwork and collaboration is essential for us. Um, one, things we found, one thing we found out during that time is that sometimes the common opera operating standards weren't as common as they should be. So that's a refinement we've actually done since that time to make it easier for, for engineers and technicians to come from other areas and work, at, work on our network and vice versa. So adding further, I suppose, resource resilience um, to what we do and, and adding um, speed or, or allowing us to recover quickly than we might otherwise if we were just reliant on our workforce, which is quite critical. New ways of doing things. So um, as these are simple examples I'm going to give you, but one of the, the great examples is that as a res result of the earthquake, we had significant damage to our cables. Uh, since that time, we've looked at new ways to do our trenching, to reinforce the, the design and the cable systems that we use to avoid or mitigate the impact from ground movement. It's, it's really quite critical because some of those cables at the time of the earthquakes took over 12 hours per cable to fix, to joint, to repair. So anything we can do, um, we will to make sure, within reason, those cables are, are laid in ground as robustly as possible. And we work with designers from San Francisco to do that who have similar sort of um, issues as we do here. Um, not only uh, in the field do we need to think of different ways to do things, but we also have to think of how um, resilient our business can be. And adding to our, our um, business resilience is the way we now house our computer systems. So they sit, let me just back up, so as a result of the earthquakes, we lost one of our computer rooms in the Amash Street site just around the corner. So uh, we had to find a, a safe place to house that kit and we decided to put it into one of these reinforced containers, um, which are manufactured by um, a German company whose name is, is sitting there. Um, but the real beauty in that system is not so much that we could quickly house the, the, the kit in somewhere safe, the, housing our business critical systems. The real beauty of that is that we can lift, as you can see there, and shift it to new premises quickly. And when, when we move from Armagh Street to our new premises in Wairaki Ro Road, certainly not done in anger or in an emergency scenario, we could unplug plug that and at 10.30 in the morning and we had that out at Wairaki and plugged in at 3.30. So that's the type of um, uh, business resilience we're looking for in case we need to use it in the future. Um, touch wood, we don't. Uh, my last example is this, is, is this, again, not sexy and earth shattering, but just having and developing, our guys have developed portable uh, substations so we can lift and shift and deploy power supply quick, quickly to developers um, or other uh, large commercial users and make sure that we are not the, the grit, if you like, in the wheels of progress to the Canterbury rebuild. We can get there and, and we can help as rapidly as possible. <laughs> so we produce those, make the cages or the trays, and we have a couple more of those in the, in the pipeline, which is, uh, I think, quite innovative of the team. Lastly, a couple of key messages uh, from your sponsor. I've got 24 seconds to go. Um, 
if you do have any responsible for, responsibility for trees, they're probably the thing that damages our network the most. Please prune and, and uh, cut them back. The other thing we find is obviously earthquakes are a major event, um, but we have a lot of windstorms and a lot of snowstorms. So we will do our level best to get power on as quickly as possible, but businesses need to have a plan B. And we found in the last September windstorms the duration of the outages caught people by surprise, and a lot of our customers were ringing us saying, what do we do? And so if you do want to come and talk to us, please do so. I'm getting Rob moving. I feel the pressure. Um, and developers, come and speak to us early, please, so we can um, not, not hold up your project plan. So in, in, in closing, um, we want to be an enabler. We want to make sure that you can have safe, warm homes and you can get on with your business. Thank you.